Hello. Good afternoon all. First of all, thank you SAP Netherlands SIT community for giving me the opportunity to present myself here, one of the interesting topics. So, so everyone I believe here is coder, right? So either maybe no coder or low coder or pro coder. So here, as because there are a lot of options nowadays to not to code and do a lot of things, do a lot of application development. And also in this recent era for the last six, eight months, AI is actually booming. AI also is helping you to code, like AI is giving you the code snippet and literally it is actually accelerating your development process so when we do have the no code platforms and ai assistant to write the code so developers like us so do we still relevant in the market so that's a big question now so let's understand all this full layer from no code to ai generated assistant layer when we talk about the no code whenever you use tools like sap build of course you will be able to generate your application in faster way right but the point is you do not have the full control so whatever is happening whatever the code it is generating behind the sink you do not have the full control so you have to stick to the options that the no code platform is providing to you so that's the reason we do need some kind of platform where we will be having options to accelerate our application development but also we should have some kind of control over there the coding part so that's where the low code platform will be coming into picture and not only for the rapid application development but also when you wanted to understand the new technologies like cloud application programming maybe like no code platform would be a right choice so when you can actually generate your code or application with using the different visual tooling option drag and drop option and at the same time if you can see the code it is generating you can easily switch between those things and you can easily relate what is happening behind the scene and simultaneously you can learn it so we'll see like the low code option now after that we'll actually try to move into the pro code option so this is how we'll be actually going into our session but before that who i am so if you wanted to connect with me later one so you can connect with me in my linkedin or maybe if you want you can directly go to so if, if you don't remember my name after this session probably you can just go and search uh, like this and you will see some of the uh, videos uh, in uh, youtube or somewhere in google okay or you can search like btp courses sap btp training or something like that so you will actually get it that's how you can reach out to me later one and now coming back to the actual topic okay so now which are the options that we have as part of this low code option so we do have the productivity tool sap has sap has given you the productivity tool inside the business application studio itself so we'll go and see the things how it is working practically right but before that i wanted to actually show some of the things before actually implementing one of the simple use case scenario using the low code option in productivity tool so you can always come in this particular platform labs.acloudguruji.com and you can search different things that i am trying to give as a different uh, topics to the community so to build any kind of application what we need so to go to the low code option we need to actually understand little bit of software architecture software design right so to build any kind of application we need data uh, so don't worry so i'm going from the very basic level i'll go to the expert level as well so please bear with me for some time so you need data you can have databases like if you are working with SAP BTP, you can have HANA or Postgre databases or also you can bring the data from any other sources like Expo HANA, ECC or other SaaS solution from SAP system and as a platform where you actually need to build and run the code or your application for that we do, we do have this SAP cloud platform, the cloud foundry environment where you do have the Node.js or Java runtime and on top of that to build the application you need some kind of backend right so to write the backend code you can use the SAP's CAP framework which is nothing but consistent of CDS code data service and service SDK in the middle and then the user interfaces you can build on top of your UI5 or Fury and to do all these kind of things you need some kind of IDE right where you actually write the code compile it and also deploy it to the platform so you can use business application studio so when you have the basic understanding of this software or application development component probably we can now move into some more detail something like this or maybe I can switch to this screen and we can go for some kind of coding or hands-on part so for that what i'll do is i'll just keep this mic a little bit away for some time and i'll just go to the sub account so here i am already in btp sub account you might be already familiar with this thing and to do this low coding low code based application development what i'll do is i'll be actually using the business application studio as the ide as you have seen earlier in the screenshot let me just do a quick refresh so i have already subscribed this business application studio so i'm going there and what you need to do is actually you can go and 
create a dev space with this option. So in this IDE, SAP has pre-installed different components so that your development process will be easier and faster. So you actually can use this full stack application using productivity tool and you can use some of the other extensions as well. And when you create the dev space with giving some name like this, so you will see something like this okay so this is one of my dev space it is like productivity tool based dev space i'm going inside and now if you are familiar with this visual studio code or maybe if you are already familiar with business application studio so i'll just try to show you how easily it is possible to implement an end-to-end application end-to-end -end crud queue in just 10 to 15 minutes so how it is possible so you can just go inside this project explorer here you can just come and create project even probably i will not use my both of my hand only single hand and full stack project productivity tool kit start you just give a name let's imagine i am giving the sit so what it will do is it will actually trying to give you the all code base with different folder structure different file structure you do not have to initiate it by yourself and to find all those things you can just go here in the explorer part you will see all the code which is actually generating behind the scene of this particular application so how actually it will look like let me just go back in between and show you how actually it will look like at the end. So when your project will get generated, you will see the project structure like this, like the app folder, DB folder, SRV folder, app, DB and SRV. So these are the main three component. And also we do have some supporting files like package.json and mta.yml. What are those? We'll try to understand in some time. So when your project got generated, here I do have this particular window. So SAP is calling this as a storyboard. So to understand anything in a very simplified way, story is the go-to option, right? So if you understand the story, so you can actually implement it easily. So for that purpose, SAP is giving this storyboard. And here you can see as a data source option, you can either create your own custom data models, which you can actually deploy as part of your local deployment option, either it HANA Cloud or Postgres, or also you can connect to the external sources like ECC, S4 HANA or something like that. And on top of that, you can build your services, which I was talking about the middle part previously. And then you can consume this particular service either from the UI application, which which also will get generated automatically. I will not do write any code here. Or also you can actually use the service in the build tool as well. That is also possible. So to implement this, what I'll do is I'll just create a so let's imagine the story is as because I am more from the education background. So let's create two entity, student entity and student course entity. Okay. So let's imagine these are the two database table that I wanted to create as a design type artifact, which will become the runtime when I'll be deploying this particular project to the Cloud Foundry. So here I'll do is I'll be using the, I'll be creating students entity and I can actually go and, and, uh, and add as many fields as I want with the corresponding type. Let's imagine for the student entity, thus id let's imagine as of now i will take it as string and let's say like student i hope i'm audible yeah so then the name is also string then email is also string mail. and that's it so if i wanted to have another entity i can just click drag and drop very simple then student courses okay and again i'll double click i have the id U ID which will automatically generate and then I uh, let's imagine the student code let's say like let's make it simple as of now wanted to have another one is active or not that's it and both of my entities are ready now now let's imagine I wanted to have the relation in between these two entity for that also I do not have to write any code but I'll do is I can directly double click or here also you can have option to drag and drop or probably just right click and double click and go to the relations and create a relation either it will be association or composition based on your requirement let's imagine it is a composition and the source entity is students and target entity let's imagine here for our scenario it is student courses here the relation what i can do is i can use student id just to give you what are the options that we have that's the reason i am just showing it to you all the possible options so here you can see one to star relation is already happening here like this you can create as many of entities with the different data types and you can put the different relations and so on so that's it so when you have done so you can see in the main storyboard you have this option now after having these entities what i'll do i'll need to expose this entity so that other application they, they can also let's say like UIFI application or build application, AppGuyware application, whatever the application, they can consume it. I just click on it, plus icon. So SAP has done wonderful job here. Here, let's imagine I will only expose this particular entity, okay? Student courses. Enable draft and editing. Uh, when you actually edit something on one of the system, you can just switch to the other system and you can also continue your uh, process like that. Okay, so I do have this particular service ready with me. That is also done. I have not written any code so far. So you can always go and go from basic view to detail view to check what are the details that you have already configured as part of this low code platform. Now, imagine I wanted to now have the UI on top of it, right? 
which will actually maybe like I wanted to have two application one application where the students register themselves like giving the course ID or maybe like the admin I will just register the student with the course ID and the is active or not and something like that and and uh, on top of that what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually have one kind of like display application one is the create application one is the display application for that also I just click on this plus icon very simple and here let's imagine here so SIT SIT NL let's imagine like here here this is a registration and next so in this option I do have this template based responsive application just click on it so you can imagine how smoothly it is going I'm actually not I can actually go behind and I, I can use my left hand left hand and do building this application right so what I'll do is I'll use this form entity object page template and the entity that I'll be using student courses automatically add a form yes add it and then finish so it will take some time because you are not writing so on behalf of you this particular tool is writing the code for you for that reason it will take some time okay so I do wanted to actually add one more UI application which will actually display the students for that also I'm just going here I'll just type SIT and L and let's say like this play and go to the next option go to this template with responsive application and list report page next and that's it finish so so far you can see like those are the things got generated automatically so we'll go to the coding part as well because as a coder or aspiring pro coder probably we wanted to see what is happening and maybe we should also have options to edit the code you can check here SIT NL project is coming up here with these options like app folder where we do have the display and registration and then we do have the DB folder where we do have this schema already got defined and also we do have the SRV folder so where we do have the service CDS got exposed and so on like this you can actually play around and do whatever you wanted to do and let's imagine now I wanted to have some kind of default data for my students so add sample data and here also you can see SAP has done amazing job like here mock data so let's imagine I wanted to have five rows just go and add it simple okay so I'm just copying one of the ID for so that I can just use this letter one and now what is happening now if you go back here in this particular code you can see as because I added the data as well it is actually adding the CSV file automatically for me so we do not have to worry about like okay so how we have to set up the cap project and what are the things that we need to do and so on so all those things are becoming easier now now what next the next thing is I can see okay so I do have the app folder which is nothing but my user interface I do have the DB folder and SRV folder or I do have files which is nothing but our backend either the data models or service I do have the package.json which is also got automatically added with this dependencies now if you are a little bit familiar with the cap application programming so you also imagine like I do need a deployment descriptor so which will help me to deploy my application in BTP Cloud Foundry right so where is that so to generate that you need to actually go to your project from the storyboard and here project action and you can use deploy project so when this is happening it will now generate the mta.yml file and it will now generate the mta.yml file and then it will actually so you can see now here it is generating the node modules and it is also generating the gen folders and also it is generating the mta.yml which is nothing but the deployment descriptor so now the things are coming up so you can learn by this way as well and you can see there are different modules like this uh, this db deployer srv module destinations and so on got automatically added here so when you have this mta.yml file I as because I do not have much time so what I can just go and tell you that you go to the gen you go to the in uh, you go to the that folder is yet to come let's wait for some time empty archive and you just right click and deploy empty archive it will automatically deploy to the cloud foundry and you can check the application but to quickly test this particular application what I'll do is I'll just go back and come here so locally also you can test it like this and here you can see there are two applications added here if I just go and let's imagine like course ID course is something like this BTP low, low code is active and then student ID if you just add it like this got added and if you just come back and go to the display and if you just go and see that particular entry is coming in the display application okay so we do not have uh, much time today so or uh, to make it a little bit interesting I do need another three minutes to complete it and uh, if you want please join with me like to play this particular only there are only five questions if you want just scan this and we will quickly wrap up so should we start so let's start so what is the full form of cap
Of course, now let's go to the next one. Okay, leaderboard, who is winning? Go to the next one. What is the foundation Node.js framework library for SAP CAP CDS? Johnny, okay. What is HDI? Okay, so we need to improve our database skill a little bit. Who is there? Still Johnny? Who is Johnny? Oh, nice. CLI command to deploy CAP application into Cloud Foundry. Everyone has bought it. Good. So Johnny is the winner. Okay. And uh, who are the others? Let me just quickly check. Okay. So uh, top five winner. Maybe like if you can just contact me later on or maybe something like. Yeah. Please, please come. Please come. <laughs> So, brand, metal, boat, and croc. I think until croc, maybe I can I can uh, contact you later one. So maybe you can come aside, and uh, I can enable you with one of my courses. So please contact me. Yeah, thank you.